I was raped by my father when I was eight. And I'm a boy. That one line entry in the data collection sheet of my research titled Incidents, Impact, Reporting, and Awareness of Incest in Major Indian Cities became the most painful story I had ever heard. That one line is turning out to be the biggest chapter of my life. That one line story made me get up and hug my own teenage nephew who was prancing in the next room with his father as his beloved football team Chelsea had scored yet another goal against his father's Man United. Isn't this what should be happening in every house around the world? Isn't this supposed to be the norm? Isn't it our responsibility as adults to provide safe homes for everyone and secure childhoods for our children? To be honest, incest had remained purely an academic exercise for me also till I read this story. The harsh reality of incest came home much too quicker when I put myself in the shoes of that eight-year-old boy that it could have been my own nephew. If I could stand like a wall to protect my nephew from all ills of the society, would you or I not do that for everyone around us? How can we be so selfish? That is when I decided that no matter what, how many hurdles I face, how many doors are slammed in my face, I would take the cause of incest beyond academics. Even if this effort makes only a little bit of difference to only the lives of a dozen people around me, that effort would be worth its while. Because let's not forget that in incest, it is not just one person who is affected. One is a victim, one is an abuser. They are both from the same family, so the whole family is affected. I urge you today to spend these next few minutes and probably walk away with a resolve to take incest out of the closet of our homes and onto our coffee tables and probably, if possible, onto the dining tables. How about another shorter story which had an even greater impact on me? Last month, I walked into a very chic office providing professional services where most of the staff has known me very well for over a decade. After the brief formality of exchanging pleasantries, one voice politely asked me, so Supreet, how is your research progressing about incest? Encouraged, I started rattling off the facts and figures from the research analysis which I had done last. Most vulnerable age for anyone to become a victim is 7 to 18 years. Most abusers fall in the age bracket of 12 to 30 years. All victims are not females. 40% of the respondents have confirmed to have witnessed an incident of incest abuse, while 18% confirmed to have been a victim themselves. Now 18% makes almost one in every five around us. 92% of the victims have never been able to share their trauma with anyone at all. Catching my breath, after a little while I added one last figure of the statistics. Two respondents from the research confirmed that their sisters had actually committed suicide because of incest abuse. At that point of time, in that office full of intelligent, smart, professional people, this beautiful young woman, out of the sight of the rest of her colleagues, she kind of hid her mouth like this and just mouthed two words at me, mine too. I froze. Allow me to make it absolutely clear right at the onset that incest finds its victims in all age groups, religions, socioeconomic backgrounds. 
It is all about someone taking advantage of their power, position, status in the family to exploit the innocence and the ignorance of the young and the dependence of others. They are all around us, both the perpetrators as well as the victims. Today, specifically, we focus only on the incidence and impact of incest abuse. So let us first define what is incest. General awareness about incest is so poor that 18% of our respondents wrongly believe that incest is actually legal in the country. Another significant 21% simply don't have a clue and they are not to be blamed because we don't talk about incest abuse either in our homes or in our schools or in our social clubs. This is a subject taboo not to be discussed. Oxford University defines incest as sexual relations between people classified as too closely related to marry each other. To attain another level of clarity on this definition, we define incest as socially prohibited, legally challengeable sexual relationships which include only close blood relationships. For example, parents, grandparents, children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters, half-brothers and half-sisters, nieces and nephews, uncles and aunts. Type of activities may include, but are not limited to, flashing, petting, touching, caressing, kissing, molesting, and intercourse. Let's go through a few recent cases to understand this phenomena a little better. Let's go beyond definitions. When a teacher sexually assaulted his student in Chandigarh last year, he broke the trusted and most biased relationship of the teacher and the taught. But this is not incest because they were not related by blood. What is a clear case of incest is when a 47-year-old son raped his 70-year-old widowed mother in Batala last year. Without an iota of doubt, this is unforgivable in practically every social, culture, religion, law, or country in the world. Let's take a more co complicated case now. A 10-year-old girl in Chandigarh was repeatedly raped for months by her own mama, mother's brother. When it was found that she's pregnant, the pregnancy could not be terminated, so a case was registered, the baby was born. The case was registered against the mama, the baby was born, and the DNA test was conducted, and it turned out that this was not the mama who was the father of the child. So then the DNA was conducted on the father and the other male relatives in the family, and it turned out that the father was yet another mama. So this 10-year-old girl, a doll, wearing pretty frocks and frills and ribbons, had become a victim. She was like a marketplace within her own home. This case is officially being treated as a case of child sexual abuse under various sections, including FOXO. A child barely out of her frocks, raped by those entrusted with her safe upbringing. Who failed her? I again ask you to think. Seeking forgiveness from all legal experts present here, I demand to know, does this heinous crime of incest not stand head and shoulders above simply being treated as a rape? or a child sexual abuse? Why are we afraid of using the word incest? Why do we hide behind the label of child sexual abuse or simple sexual abuse in which the perpetrator may or may not be known to the victim? But in incest, it is clearly a crime committed by somebody who is related by blood. Let's not confuse incest with sexual abuse in general. As a common man, you may wonder how common is incest. NSPCC says that 70% of 
all sexual abuse in children is committed by somebody from within the family. That is how often it happens around us. I ask you, how many more should suffer before we collectively sit together and decide to take action? I am often snubbed by parents, teachers, and even principals and other professionals alike as they believe they have done their duty by showing the children the videos of good touch and bad touch. Now these good touch and bad touch videos, they tell the child that if you are touched by anyone on the areas which are covered by your swimsuit or on your mouth, you are supposed to go out and tell your five trusted friends and these five trusted friends are generally father, mother, grandfather, grandmother and your teacher. But nobody tells the child what to do if the bad touch arises from these five trusted friends. What do we, where does a child go at that point of time? This is where this concept fails quite miserably because incest abuse is an insider's job and we don't tell the child what happens when the trouble is from inside. I move on to the impact of incest on victims. My endeavours to end incest are motivated solely by the plight of the victims that came to the fore during the course of my research because statistics for me represent real people. They are not numbers. Incest victims suffer and they suffer enormously, often alone and in silence. Shock, guilt, self-blame, karmic account, shame, embarrassment, soon turn into denial, anger, nightmares, self-harm, and finally suicide. When would we open our eyes to the impact of incest around us? Trauma of impact, the trauma of incest impacts males and females differently. Women are still able to confide but men are condemned for life as they run the risk of being not mature enough to man up to the abuser. When an appeal to participate in our research was published on an FB page, men abused the author generously, claiming it doesn't happen in our culture. Interestingly, overnight I received 90 responses out of it, 72% confirmed to have been either a victim or a witness of incest abuse. This incidence alone in one night speaks volumes about the stigma of being a male victim. I'm sure some of you must be thinking, if it is that alarming, why is it not reported? I ask the same, why indeed? Family reputation. What else? Who would marry our children if the word got out? When asked how they responded when someone confided incest in them, 35% of the respondents said, they simply didn't know what to say. 33% felt too embarrassed to talk about it. I'd be encouraging. Would we ask for a change only if our own brother, mother, or sister were abused? Given the above results, would you blame the victims for bearing the suffering without sharing with anyone? Please don't. One girl suffered being raped by her uncle for years because she believed being raped herself would protect her younger sister. She eventually committed suicide. Uncle continues to rape the younger sister. Positive of time does not permit me to analyze the consanguinity or consensual incest, but we must be aware of the genetic implications of this sex. Despite the extent and gravity of incest, the rape laws in India still do not clearly include incest. Hence, authorities are compelled to use a combination of legal provisions to register the case under sections labeled rape, attempt to sexually exploit, or unnatural offenses, etc. Progress has been made, but is not laws. Post Goa Children's Act 2003, Nirbhaya's case has led to a much stricter Boxo Act in 2012, <coughs> Considered a legal triumph of sorts, it has its own shortcomings. However, there have been a few progressive judgments. In 2010, a father was sent to life imprisonment in Delhi for raping his minor daughter and fathering a child. 
However, earlier last year, last year in Rotak, Judge Seema Singhal sent a father to spend his entire natural life in jail for repeatedly raping his minor daughter. She also sent a suggestion to make, in, make incest a crime punishable separately under the ICE IPC with more severe punishments than awarded for just a week. Let me take you back to the story of that 10 year old girl who was violated by her maternal uncle. The mother went to the police station against her brother only when she was told that the pregnancy is beyond safe termination time. She got a case registered only because the shame could no longer either be hidden or aborted away. A few days ago, a father shot his 16 year old son because he not just sexually assaulted the minor cousin, but he raped her also. Is that the kind of society we want, to, want us to grow and want our children to grow in? We are either killing each other or we are hiding the crime. That's no way to live. That's no way to make progress. Would you let me appeal to you to be the catalyst for change today in our society? Alone I can't do much, but together, perhaps we could create a multiple support system in every city of India. We have successfully done that in Chandigarh and Lutana, where the doctors the medical, um, from the medical field as well as the lawyers and the mental health specialists have come forward to provide the support and counselling to those who are affected by the incest. I'm sure we have these professionals in every city across the country. We can come together and form this problem. Even if it is lip service, I request you to please talk about the incest because unless we talk about it, it will not become a, 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 an acknowledged thing in our society. Can we not create public awareness, leading to social action, demanding legal recourse? An incest victim wrote to me once, I truly believe that while it is essential to make good laws and track policies, we also need to grow up as a society because maybe the abusers themselves were victims at some time. Remember, we help save one victim we help create one life. We help one predator or abuser. We are saving five potential lives. Shall we begin? Thank you.